I find the writings of the mystics to be inspiring as well as deeply touching and, and that they resonate with me. I think of people like Teresa of Avila, the Spanish mystic, or Hafiz, the Persian uh, Sufi poet, and Abraham Heschel, the Polish-born Jewish rabbi. They're from different cultures, different time periods, yet they capture something of their experience, their, of their intimacy with the divine, their awareness of, of God in their life, and of how that presence of the divine changes their world and their perceptions. And it's very rich and inspiring to me. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about mysticism and mystical experience. And as I do that, I wanna invite you to subscribe to this channel, as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. The classic definition of mysticism is experiencing the divine, experiencing God in a, very, in a real way. Now, I don't wanna be very dogmatic about that because what we have in terms of mystical traditions really grew up within religion. And, and in the last century, our understandings have broadened. So as I use the term divine or God, I, I, I wanna expand that out to think in terms of other ways, other metaphors that people use to describe this experience. The mystery, the source, spirit, all of these things that point to some ultimate other that we encounter, that, that we experience as totally whole yet totally limitless. And to whatever language works for you, for me, that's the divine. You know, use that language, develop that language. And one of the things that we know from, from the writings of the mystics is that the experience is such that it's difficult for them to put into words. And so they really end up pushing the edges of the vocabulary they have access to. Now, I grew up being taught that mystics and mysticism, well, you know, I would was taught I would never meet a mystic and that mysticism, well, you know, that's just for the great saints. That's not for ordinary people. And I've come to understand that that's really not the case, that many, many people have mystical experiences. Some have a few, some, some it's, it's, you know, part of their normal spiritual life. And it's important to realize that this thing called mysticism isn't any one thing. It isn't just having dreams or visions or hearing voices. It can be those things, but it can be simpler than that too. It's in essence about having that experience of the divine, of the mystery that is both the experience and it impacts our lives in positive ways. So for instance, Julian of Norwich, the English mystic, had visions and heard voices and we read what she recorded of those things. And as we read it today, you know, it's, it's frightening. It's very intense, it's very rich. Hildegard of Bingen, the German mystic, also had visions, but they were beautiful visions. She, they were so intense for her and so real and so sublime that, that she recounted them to others who in turn drew and painted them. And so that was a different kind of mystical experience. And then Teresa of Avila, who has inspired me for many, many years, she sensed a presence. She was aware of this presence and she experienced communion and union with that presence. And it wasn't about hearing voices or about visions or dreams, but it was tending to that presence and being open to the presence. And I think many mystics today fall into that category. Well, probably not just today, probably throughout all times, that it was experiencing the depth of a presence that was transformative in some way. 
Now, there are people who seek out certain things. They are people who seek out, you know, having a vision or hearing a voice or having a dream or having some magical insight. And I think that's really confusing the manifestation from the actual experience, which is an experience of intimacy with the divine, with the other. And as with any intimate experience, you can't program it. Think about having an intimate experience with another person. You can do all kinds of things to sort of make it happen but it happens as it happens. And so that's really important with mystical experience, that when you encounter it, when you experience it, to simply be there, to be present to it, to be aware of it, but don't try to analyze it. You know, think about trying to analyze a date where you're experiencing romance. If you analyze it, it all falls apart. It doesn't work, but simply be there and be present. It's not something you can conjure up. But it is true that people who regularly practice spiritual practices, who regularly engage in spiritual practices, they create sort of a, a climate in their life where mystical experience becomes more likely, that it they set the ground, they till the soil uh, and allow that process to lead them into a more direct kind of experience with the divine. It isn't formulaic. It may happen and it may not happen. And if it happens, it doesn't mean that you have a better spiritual life or you're more saintly or anything else. It means that you've had a particular encounter with the divine. And if it's not happening in that way for you, it doesn't mean that something is wrong. It means that your spiritual life is somewhat different. And we each have unique spiritual lives, just as we each have unique personalities. But I thought it was important to talk about this today because it's something that does happen to people. And it's confusing and people aren't sure what to do with it. So my question is, are you a mystic? Well, you're the only one who can answer that question. Have you had the experience of encountering the divine, that source, that ultimate other? And do you allow it to change your life and to lead you forward? That's the heart of mysticism. It's a gift for us, part of our spiritual life that happens for many people. Thanks for being with me today. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, click the bell, share it with others, and know that I really do appreciate your time. Thank you.